All right, so let's talk about endometrial pain. Dante, what are we talking about? What happened? It's a big study, right? There was. There was a meta-analysis, uh, antioxidant, vitamins, supplementation, reduce endometriosis-related pelvic pain in humans, a systematic review and meta-analysis. Amazing title, as it is. always. Titles are always... <laughs> incredibly insightful. Maybe okay. Basically just read the title and you're good. Yeah. So what is endometrial pain? What is endometriosis? What are we talking about here? Yeah. So it's a very prevalent issue. Unfortunately, it's a, it's a chronic inflammatory disease and it's defined by the presence of extra uterine endometrial tissue. So essentially you have, uh, kind of the overgrowth of the tissue that's normally supposed to be there. It starts to grow you know, sort of in areas that it's not supposed to. And this, you know, hyper proliferation of tissue and cells is what lends itself to, you know, unfortunately, a lot of the side effects and, and life issues associated with it. Is it just thickening? I mean, is it just like a, a rapid thickening of the, of the uterine wall? <clears throat> it's, it's complicated. Um, but in general, that, that's a fair, uh, you know, a very, fair assessment, I would say. Okay. I mean, they, they call them basically endometrial lesions that are there. Um, it's just, yeah, you have to just think of it as like this hyper proliferation of, of cells and tissues. And it's just such a, you know, over the top cascade of events that lend, that leads to yeah. just what you can see on the outer surface, basically of, you know, as just more tissue. Got it. More you know, and, and this, this results in a great deal of pain among other things. Absolutely. Absolutely. So the main sort of issues being, um, dysmenorrhea. So, you know, painful periods, issues with periods, um, chronic pelvic pain in general, and then <clears throat> also issues with, um, pain during intercourse and around that sort of thing. And then also, um, by default affects personal relationships and profession, you know, your professional life. Sure. It's just the, the symptoms and issues associated with it can be quite debilitating. In addition to having, uh, you know, having playing a role in fertility and the potential to remain fertile and, um, and become pregnant for sure has an impact on that as well. And this is, this is relatively widespread. It is. So I would say realistically it affects up to 10% of reproductive age women and also 35 to 50 percent of those who have pelvic pain and infertility okay end up having <clears throat> and that ends up being the cause as sort of the underlying issue okay yes all right do we know what causes this so there really is not one clear agreed upon source of course it's a of very comp very complicated etiology um one of the papers where we were looking at has a essentially a listing and explanation of different theories behind it. So we can go over those briefly to kind of shed further light on how, um, you know, how difficult maybe it is to treat this and why there are a handful of different approaches that worked to manage the symptoms. Yeah. And so the, one of the main theories, one of the theories that's been, a, been around for a while is uh, retrograde menstruation and so essentially the the flow of the endometrial content that is ends up in the pelvis essentially allows for endometrial lesions to actually implant themselves so it's just like this build up of stuff throughout what, the course of menstruation what should have left the body <clears throat> right. didn't properly and then it okay mm -hmm. that's interesting that makes sense yep and so then there's also a uh, transformation of actual tissues that are supposed to be there they actually just kind of change their um, properties and that's you know the actual cell types and that sort of thing can lend itself to the manifestation of this hormones of course so estrogen, it's referred to basically as the estrogen-driven prol proliferation of endo endometrial lesions, as you, you, know, you hear the endometrial lesions yep. again. Yep. And then also, uh, as we talked about in some other uh, settings, progesterone plays a role in sort of the, the management of how the endometrium responds to different hormones mm -hmm. as well. 
So some sort of resistance to the progesterone-mediated control allows for this over-proliferation of tissue. Right. So that's the hormonal impact. Uh, now this is where this the current research will sort of come in, the current paper we were referring to here at the outset. Yeah. Oxidative stress and inflammation is a big plays a big role. And so the recruitment of immune cells and the production of their cytokines ultimately are what promote endometrial growth. And so something like vitamin C, vitamin E, potent dietary antioxidants, um, you know, are thought to maybe play a role in that as aspect, therefore lowering some of these clinical manifestations. Okay. So, and there, there are a handful of others. Uh, there's immune to kind of go along with oxidative stress and inflammation, there's immune dysfunction. Mm -hmm. uh, there's the suppression of apoptosis. And so basically, a, anytime you hear that term, you just think of cell death, basically. So there's constant turnover of cells in the body. Right. And in this case, there, there has to be some sort of cell turnover when you think about menstruation in general you know, the turnover of cell cells in that area of the tissue. If that normal, you know, cell killing or cell, cell death, turnover right, right. sort of occurs, if you, if some, if for some reason that goes awry and you, you're not regulating it in that line of the track, yeah, then you have this, you know, um, proliferation here of endometrial growth. Also genetic, there's certainly a genetic component and then there are also issues all the way down to stem cells. Wow. And so, so we think about, you know, un, under differentiated cells that um, are <laughs> at the very base layer potentially leading to this. Okay. So th the punchline is we don't exactly know what's mm -hmm. causing it. We have lots and lots of ideas and we see lots of threads that we are trying to pull on and figure out what's going on, but mm -hmm. we don't fully know. 